Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I want to talk about a device that I got from MakerFab. It's called the MA Touch, and it is an ESP32 S3. It's a device that allows you to uh, program different aspects of the uh, machine. And it has, uh, it has, obviously, it has a control board on the back and it has a display on the front. We'll, we'll look at more of this as we get into it. But this is a, uh, and it has a rotary dial around the side and then you can, you can click the uh, device in and out and do different things. But it also has a capacitive touch display. This is a, uh, an IPS rotary display with touch about, I think it's 2.1 inches. Uh, according to what they say, it is a TFT LCD. So let's let's talk about some of the other specs of the device and kind of delve in a little bit about it. So the uh, controller chip is an ESP32 S3 W Room-1. It has an antenna that's built in, and that supports both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5. It comes with 16 megabytes of on-board, uh, on, on the board flash memory, and then 8 megabyte of PS RAM built into the uh, controller. The LCD is a, a 65 color, and it uses a ST7701S LCD driver in order for it to work. So if you are programming this, you'll need to know that in order to get the right support for that device to work. It will, it will support greater than 70 frames per second, and it supports a resolution up to 480 by 480. Uh, as far as the additional information about the LCD interface, it's an RGB 565. The touch panel is a five point touch capacitive touch panel and it uses a CST8266 driver. And then the USB interface on the back is USB-C and that is a native USB-C. The cable it comes with is a USB-C to USB-A connector. So that should help connect it to most devices uh, and most computers. It has two interfaces, an I2C and a UART, and those are 1.25 millimeter uh, four connector uh, uh, ports. And it does support the Arduino IDE. There are a couple of others that we'll talk about as well, and there's an, it operates in a temperature range of minus 40 uh, centigrade up to, or Celsius, up to 85 uh, degrees uh, Celsius. So, yeah, it, it, yeah, it's colder and hotter than it ever gets here. So let's uh, let's go, let's take a look at the device a little bit. So this is the MakerFab page, and I'll put a link below so that you can uh, just click on it and go to this as well. It is a uh, it costs about uh, forty four dollars and eighty cents at the time that I. And that's USD prices at the time that I'm looking at this today uh, for the video. So there's a number of photographs of it here. There's some videos that go through some of its features. Uh, and then there's some, there's some demos that exercise the demo applications that are available to you from their wiki page and their GitHub page if you want to install those and, and then use that as maybe a baseline for your code or maybe just to explore some of the features that it does. And of course, they're showing here an external control of a, it looks like a stepper motor here with uh, the stepper motor controller. Yeah, so there's a number of places to start out with. So the last time I covered an ESP32, I talked about uh, LVGL, and I also talked about square line. So LVGL is the is the standard for graphics development on ESP32, and I think uh, even the Arduino as well. So this is basically an IDE that allows you to design your look and feel for your what you want on your device, and then it will generate uh, code uh, in C++ that will allow you to 
exercise and check out your, you know, your GUI design before you commit to adding control to the application and uh, logic as well. So your control flow and logic, that's all up to you. But yeah, it, it is free and, and you can you can get a, a support version, a supported version of it as well. So for it's free for personal use, but not commercial. So if you want if you want to be able to sell this, you'll need to have uh, one of the per you'll have to purchase one of the pricing plans for that. But but yeah, they show you some of the, the control types. Uh, there's one with a round like a smartwatch display another one and then they have some we looked at this before so shouldn't be anything magic there uh, as far as the data sheet is concerned this is pretty comprehensive this is pretty comprehensive it's about a 72 page manual that goes through all of the features of the esp32 s3 so that's really helpful and uh, there's also a wiki and a github let's go look at the wiki first so this this gives you an introduction to the device this will be the rotary TFT display. It Again, it, it goes through some of the features and then it shows you the hardware close up. So, so you'll notice a few things here. There's the two uh, connectors of the uh, buttons for flashing. This would be how you upload programs to the device and then a reset in order to restart the device. So, after, of course, you'll, it instructs you to do that on the reload. There's also information about dimensions. So if you're looking to mount this on a wall like a thermostat, you can do that. They also have information here about which versions of the Arduino IDE to download and use. So we can, we can go over there and see that. This is... Uh, 18.19, which is what they're talking about as one of them that you can use. And there, it's available for Windows, um, both Windows 7 and then a newer, and then you have a zip file if you want. Uh, there's also a WinApp for uh, 1.8 or 10. Linux, 32-bit, 64-bit. Uh, this would be Intel AMD, and then you have versions for ARM as well. Uh, there's uh, a version for Mac OS, and that supports either the Intel version or ARM, an ARM-based Mac, So, which is obviously we're running on an ARM-based Mac right now. It'll step you through that, and you will you can correctly, let's see, I think that's where I was, uh, get the appropriate things. Now, one piece of advice I have for you, don't do step two yet, uh, because there's this Kind of, it, it's a little bit grayed out on mine, but it's blue when you'll see it for the first time. Go to the guide and follow that because there is some setup that you should do. Now, on a Mac, it's called settings. On Linux, it's called preferences. So, um, yeah, this right here with additional board managers. Uh, if you scroll down here, they'll show you that you need these two URLs added to the list of board manager URLs. That's to help pick up the right device uh, libraries. So yeah, follow that. Now they show 205 over here, uh, but back here they show 206. And 206, let me just okay that, and I'll show you where that is. So we'll go to the boards and we'll go down here to the board manager. Now wait for it to come up and I'll type in ESP32. And then we get that. I've installed 2.0.6 as they did here. Now they say you can use 2.0.10. I didn't test that. I just started out with this. It worked. And so I stopped. Uh, I think the latest version is 3.0 alpha. 2014. So whenever you're into these, you know, whenever there's requirements for specific versions, watch out for your automatic updates because <laughs> they could have unintended consequences of installing a newer library or a newer board driver that you may not want, <laughs> that you may not want. Uh, because, I mean, those haven't been tested, so who knows what will happen. I mean, it might work and it might not, right? Um Best thing is to follow their advice. And I did, and I had no problems. So, 
that usually works the best. And don't skip steps. If you skip steps, you're going to be in trouble too. The other thing is, is that they recommend installing the GFX library for Arduino version 1.31. And the reason for that is they say that the TFI ESPI library doesn't support the ST7701 driver. So that's you can pick that support up here. And how you get to that is through the manage libraries. And we'll just type well, as soon as it gives me a search. It's loading. So we'll do a GFX. And there is a lot of these. So we'll have to scroll down here to find it. And it's right here. So the one, the version I installed was the one they recommended, which is 1.3.1. And again, be careful. There's, yeah, up to 1.4. If your updates come in, just say no thanks, don't 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 apply them. Uh, yeah, otherwise, again, you could have unintended consequences. Then there's a um, there's a page here for uh, their GitLab or GitHub page, excuse me, where if I click on this, it should take me to that page. In here, there's a number of examples and libraries to go along with those that will allow you to test out different parts of the board. Uh, the first place they start you out is with the FW underscore test. That uses the GFX driver. This one down here is exactly the same test, except it uses the L LVGL graphics driver. And then, yeah, so they'll need, they'll need to have all this stuff in here as well. Um, yeah, so you can, uh, let's just back up. and just drop down through here. The last thing to make sure that you have correctly configured is these settings. So the first one you'll want is the board, which board manager you want to use, which is the top one right here. So I went to boards, ESP32 Arduino, and it's the top one, ESP, at least on my list. ESP32 S3, that's the one you want. Then the next thing you want to look for is flash size, and that's 16 megabyte. That's what's on the board, and so we want to, we want to be able to use all that. The partition scheme, they now for this example, they have us doing uh, 16 meg flash, 3 meg, and, uh, and a FAT file system. Uh, and then we also want to we also want to set PS RAM to OSI PS RAM, and set you can set this or not, but I would set it. It just makes sure that it cleans out your old application before it tries to install the new one. And then lastly, you'll need to set your port, which is this right here. Now that's not on, but if I turn this on. Yeah, it's not showing, so let me give that a second. Now it's showing properly, so that's the device we want. So, yeah, we'll make sure that that is, has taken that one. So, at that point, you're ready to uh, unpack this and then start working with uh, some of your devices. Uh, some of you are at software. So uh, I've already done this one. So I guess let's do the FS test this time around. And we'll compile it, which it's already been compiled once. But And this should go fairly quickly. This isn't a really big program. The other one, though, which has the actual displays in it, I can, uh, I can show you that while that's compiling is that it first of all it has this little debugger that kind of goes through and makes sure that the device is working and then you can choose which displays you want and it, it does have a touch screen so there there uh, you can go around and also you can use your finger to 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 make the setting where you want it how you want to set this, if it's something that makes sense to set it. Let's see what we're doing on the program. It's compiled. 
So let's go ahead and upload it. This won't have, this will just be that front end tester. Yep, so it's probably gonna clear it out. So this might take a bit. There it goes. So now it's telling me to reset the device. So what I will do is I'll come back here and hold this up and then reset it. And then it should give me, there we go. Now that's the program we just uploaded. So the only thing this one does is I can turn the, the wheel and it will change between several colors. I can also click and then the, it'll, the button will go to one. It says button there in the middle and then back to zero. And I can also move my finger around and it will show my position on the screen. That's a, and that's a good check out to see if everything is working before you get started with this. Let's see. Then it's just a matter of what applications do you want to play around with and which ones do you want to try out for yourself. So let me go back and, and then they, they do go through the other ones like how to run the L, the FW test underscore two using LVGL. And then once you have that set up, then you can actually bring in the larger one that has the UI on it that we saw earlier with the three different screens. So let's go back and uh, chat about what my impressions of the device are. Uh, I it, it was a really a joy to work with. It's very simple to, uh, if, as long as you follow the directions, it works fine. I did run into a problem trying to use this under Fedora uh, 39 on Asai on the Mac Mini because it did not find a USB connector. It didn't find a USB port. So I think that might be an issue. I mean, that's a beta. That's a beta build anyway. So I wasn't really expecting it to work. But I think what I will do is I will go and I'll install it on either uh, Fedora 39 or F Fedora 39 Silver Blue and try it there and see how well that works. It should work fine, but uh, yeah, uh, probably a lot better than this beta <laughs> this beta thing. They're making a lot of changes. Every time I go in there and do the update, there's like a list of stuff that they have changed. So yeah, once it reaches, once it gets past its beta point, now, now it's not Fedora that's the beta now. It's still a sigh is the beta. So once they get, that's the drivers that you need for the other piece. So once they get all that working, it'll probably be good. So I want to thank, thank you Maker Fabs for letting me have the opportunity to try out this device. And, uh, and if you're interested, check out the link below and uh, also go check the rest of their site. They have other things there you might be interested in. But uh, anyway, that's all I had for today. Uh, it might make a good stocking stuffer. Yeah, it might at that. Hope to see you soon. Bye for now.